Okay, so we're going to get uh, started. Welcome back from spring break. Hope you all had a good one. Uh, nice, relaxing, non-hungover one. Um, today, you get your final for the class. I know. Um, it, is, uh, it is day 18 of, I forget how many we have, 30, something like that. Um, but I want to go through the final. We'll talk about what it is. The reason that I do this this early is because I would rather have you spend your time building something that you're designing and that you can use when we get to cutting sections and doing good renderings and whatever. If you're doing your own project versus me just giving you little things to work on, it's far more effective if, you, if you're working on your own. So just because I'm giving it to you right now doesn't mean that you can wait until the very end and just do it in the last three weeks because you kind of need to finish this long before those last three weeks because we're going to do a bunch of stuff to it. Um, some of the stuff we will do, we're, we will end up creating uh, the four primary renderings, which are an interior day rendering, an interior night rendering, and an exterior day rendering, and an exterior night rendering. So there are four primary renderings that you're going to do, both day and night, both interior and exterior. Uh, that's part of it. You will also create line drawings from the, your, your drawing uh, or your model. So you'll create a plan view, a section view, and an elevation view. I'm only requiring that you turn two of those three in, but you will be doing all three as part of the class. Uh, we will cut sectional perspectives. So you'll be able to slice off part of your building, take a look at what's going on inside. Um, one of the great things about Rhino and V-Ray and the way that I'll teach you how to do it is we can preserve all the natural light settings. So even though you take off part of the building, it's like if you've worked in SketchUp, you take off part of the building, suddenly the sunlight streams through the big opening. That's no good. We want to see what the sunlight actually looks like in the building without part of the building there. I'll teach you how to do it so that it'll still come through the windows. You'll still see the accurate shadows on the wall, but we'll be able to slice off half your building uh, and take a look at it. So there is a lot of stuff to do after you're, quote, done with your final. So if that makes sense. So we have to do some modeling now to get ready for it. So that the actual, the next two days uh, in class this week, you'll end up spending an awful lot of time just trying to build the model, design and build the model. And you need a lot of time to do that. Um, and so I think you have the skills to do it, so it's time to start kind of pushing in that direction. Uh, we will work on it for a little bit, then we'll take a break and get into lighting, and then we'll ultimately come back to it and bring in new lighting settings to get ready for the nighttime renderings, which are coming. Um, so a couple notes about the way this is all going to work out. So I already talked about the, the general requirements. Exterior day perspective, exterior night perspective, interior day perspective, interior night perspective. You will also do the line drawings. Um, it's one clay rendering plan and one clay rendering section or elevation. So I told you it was going to be one. You can choose between those. Uh, you're going to be printing all of those six on 11 by 17 sheets, one per sheet, no fancy layouts, no text necessary, put your name on the back, nothing, nothing too extraordinary. But I collect them all in a big book at the end. So I have, I have everybody's stuff. You will at least turn in six for me. Many times people do more renderings than just those. If you want to do more, that's great. When you post your work, you'll post the ones you want me to grade first. And then if you have extras, you can still post them. If you have extra prints, you can have those uh, as well. So all of this will be due on the Monday of finals week, which is the 20th of May. So unlike last semester, where everything was on uh, Wednesday, I've decided to make the due date for this class the 20th. That being said, because of the 16-week semester and the powers that be, who didn't think this through before they did it, but that's a side topic. Um, we technically have to have class on Wednesday of that week, which makes no sense to me. So, um, and, and that's why last semester in the fall, you probably noticed all your finals were on Wednesday and Thursday instead of spreading them out. So I'm trying to be nice and have this due earlier so you can plan for your finals. However, on that Wednesday, you have to come in here and you have to check in with me. So you basically have to walk into the room, say, hey, how's it going? I'm going to go work on some stuff. And I'll say, great, I'm glad you're working on some stuff. And you'll check in with me, and all will be good. So all of the final and your coursework and everything else will be due on Monday, 
by the end of class. Does that make sense? So we're not like hanging, I don't want you still working on regrades and then giving them to me on Wednesday. Everything's done on Monday. The only thing you have left after class on Monday is to come in and say hi to me on Wednesday. Is that nice and clear? Okay. It will be a graded thing. It'll be part of your participation. It's not worth very much. But basically come in and say hi and then go stress out about 221 or 220 or whatever it is that you're working on. Okay. So, or ask me all kinds of questions about that because that's what you guys all do anyway or have me help over with the plotter or any of the other things that happen year after year. So uh, hopefully that's nice and clear. Um, trying to think through anything else. You will need to post it to the course website um, as is normal. Okay, so today we're gonna start working on this retreat. And what it is, is it's an artist's retreat. And I, I've spent some time over the semesters, I, I do this same project every semester, and um, the reason that I set it up this way is because some people are at a place in their um, academic career where they feel like they really need a, a, like a good portfolio piece to put in that's separate and apart from the things that you've been doing, a different scale, a different size, different renderings, different drawings, that sort of thing. Uh, and so you can take this and really run with it. Um, what you're designing is a retreat for an artist. You pick the artist. You're designing for them. It could be based on their style or it could be based on their needs, depending, and you're deciding. So you're kind of fabricating this whole narrative about why you're designing it this, this particular way. If you're not at a place in your career where you feel like you need that great portfolio piece, et cetera, you could be as simple as just picking yourself as the artist. Technically, you could argue that you're an artist, so you're designing a little cabin for yourself. Okay? That's not going to be the portfolio piece, but you'll still get there and you'll still do fine in the class. So there's a lot of flexibility built into this assignment on purpose because some people need more out of it than other people do. Uh, and so it's set up for you in that um, context. So it's very, very small, 500 square feet, really small. Those of you that took 135, you did your cabin was like 1,000 square feet. This is smaller than that. So think shared space, think tiny house, all of that sort of thing. Uh, and that's on purpose because I don't want you to spend time modeling 3,000 square feet and not put any detail in. 500 square feet is small. That means you can put an awful lot of detail into this. We're talking light fixture placements, uh, you know, fixtures. If you're doing a kitchen, stuff in the kitchen, chairs, furniture, very well developed 500 square feet. And so my point is it's small for a reason. That being said, if you feel like you really don't want to worry about designing the bathroom, you control what you show me. So if you don't want to design the bathroom and you just have a room that is the bathroom, for example, and you don't ever render it and you don't show it to me, hey, that's your choice. You can choose what you're rendering. Remember, one interior, one exterior, one day, one night. You, can, you have a lot of control. Now, when we get to the floor plan, you're, you need to be able to designate that as a bathroom. But beyond that, you don't have to actually render it. So some people do like to render the bathrooms anyway. So I'm just pointing that out, uh, that you have that flexibility as well. Um, so it is in two, you have uh, two possible sites for this. One is up near Lake Tahoe, and one is on the coast by uh, Point Reyes. And you can pick either one of those sites. Depends. I leave that open-ended because some people really like to model certain things. Uh, obviously, if you're at the coast, you're not going to have snow. If you're in Tahoe, you have the potential to have snow, and some people like to do the snow rendering, too. Um, so there's, there's flexibility built in there as well. So let's talk about the sites themselves. Uh, oh, whoop. <laughs> I didn't, didn't delete this. Uh, that was from last semester. I will, I will fix that. You do have this requirement. <laughs> um, right here, the zip file with site information at the bottom. This contains information about the two different sites. We'll let it finish its download here. Maybe. While it's finishing, I will also point out that that 500 square feet is interior space, not exterior. So you can have you know, patio or space outside of that uh, if you want. That being said, 
500 square feet little cottage and 8,000 square feet of exterior space, probably not the right balance, but just saying. Okay, so let me open this up. And inside of this, we have two different sites. I've given you the SketchUp file. The AutoCAD files, um, I used to do stuff with the AutoCAD files. That's old. You don't need the AutoCAD files. It's not going to help you at all. Um, the SketchUp files are SketchUp version 7, so you can bring those into Rhino a little bit later on. That'll be the site. Um, some people will go and get the site from SketchUp. That's the other option, uh, the same way that we did with our topography. Uh, but there are also these KML files, which are Google Earth files. Uh, Google Earth is not installed on these computers anymore, but you can go to uh, google.com slash earth and they have an uh, online version. You can load that version, but I think you have to go into settings and then check the button at the bottom here for enable KML file import. If it's not already enabled, you would have to do that. Uh, and then we can actually load up the KML file, I think. Hold on. This is what happens when they move stuff around. There we go. Uh, it's under this little bookmark. It says My Places. We can import the KML file. And I'm going to go ahead and open the first one here, Building Site 1. If I remember correctly, this is the one that's in Lake Tahoe. Yep. Okay, and so I've zoomed in a little bit there. If you're familiar, anybody been to Lake Tahoe before? Okay, if you're familiar with South Shore, the big mountain that's near South Shore is called Mount Talak. It's right here. You're on one shoulder of, uh, of the mountain. I'll flip into 3D view so you can get a little bit better sense here. You guys are right out here in this little shoulder looking out. So you're looking essentially from right here out toward Lake Tahoe. So you've got, it's a loaded site. I recognize that. You've got a really nice view to take advantage of. Um, it's also interesting because you have a fairly flat portion at the top here that you can build on, or you can kind of hang over the side and have a nice steep terrain to work with. It's up to you as to whether you want to be on the side or, or kind of over the terrain like that. I'm going to switch back in to 2D and then 3D so it can start rotating around for us. Uh, as it's looking, but this gives you some, some idea of, of where, you, where you are. Both sites are not accessible by road, so you're going to be hiking to them. However, you can assume that all services would be provided for you, so you don't have to design water tanks and, and that sort of thing. There's water, there's sewer. I don't know how, but we're just going to pretend that there is. Okay? Uh, furthermore, you don't have a budget that's so restrictive that you can't get your building materials in there. You don't have to rely on horseback to bring your materials in. If you want something big, you can fly it in with a helicopter. Sound fair? Okay. So you aren't, however, designing a garage or putting cars into this rendering. So those are specifically excluded. Um, so it's meant to just be um, kind of out. So there you are. I'll zoom out a little bit so we can see context. There's Lake Tahoe. This is Mount Talak here. You're going to be over on this shoulder, uh, kind of in this little point with the, this bowl and this bowl, and you can build on the sides of those or on the flat top, depending on how you want to go. So let's go ahead, and uh, I'm going to load up that other one. This is the one that's going to be out on the coast. And so we'll jump over to the coast here. Uh, so this is Tamales Point. Again, accessible. It's actually fairly close to civilization, but you're across the water from it. Um, and this is uh, Point Reyes. There's the Point Reyes National Seashore. And you're going to be right out here at this, this point on the northern end of, of the, the tip here. Uh, again, similar site conditions. Let me flip over into the 3D version so you can see it. Fairly flat on top, cliffs on the sides. I'm not worried about uh, seismic activity or crumbling ocean cliff, cliffs or any of that kind of stuff. We're assuming that it's solid enough for you to build on, uh, and you can choose to build on the cliff side or on the top, depending on uh, what your look is. 
So obviously, each of these sites is fairly loaded. They're, and what I mean by loaded is they're really good sites with big views and whatever. They would be extraordinarily expensive if you could even have them, which you can't because they're both uh, state protected lands or nationally protected lands. So uh, you're not going to get that. Um, no surprise, there's great views. If you're on the coastal setting, you've got typical California coastal, northern California coastal weather. Uh, means it's going to be fairly cold and fairly overcast or foggy a lot of the time, but you are going to get those rare instances where you have these beautiful days and, and you're experiencing that. Uh, you're going to have winds coming in offshore, so you're going to be experiencing those winds. Um, sunset is obviously out to the uh, west. The files, when you load them, north is always going to be straight up, so it's going to give you some context uh, in comparison. North would be straight up. Uh, in this sense, then, the left side would be the view out toward the, um, the sunset. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I, I want to impart. Um, obviously, no snow in the coastal version. Snow would be in the uh, upper version or in the, the Tahoe version. Some people like to do design around that. Some people don't. You could assume that the cabin is only used in the summer if you don't want to worry about snow. Just be aware uh, of those kinds of circumstances. So I have the files for you to look at and to play around with and to kind of decide. Today, it's about deciding which site you want to work on. So actually open them both up. Even if you're like, oh no, I, I really just want to design the mountain view, open up the coast and look at it and have a, have, a little, have a little look, look at some of the pictures, do some Google searching, and kind of decide what feels right to you. If you're more interested in designing it and you're more interested in the location, the final product will be better. So I'd like to leave that flexibility for you. Um, I do have some special things that are set up for you. If you're working in the Tahoe file, I have actually Lake Tahoe uh, with the mountains and whatever as a big rendered block that you can bring in uh, to do your renderings. Likewise, at the coast, I have a special file for the ocean that will help you mimic the, the rendering of the ocean, etc. cetera. So he, you've got even treatment in either case. Uh, I don't know yet exactly which site I'm going to draw. do my example one on this semester. I kind of flop back and forth and try to do it differently each semester. Um, are there any questions about it? No? I mean, I think the big thing is for you guys to, to spend your time wisely and to actually get started. Uh, today, you'll have about three hours to work on it. On Wednesday, I'll talk a little bit about bringing your, your buildings and putting them together. Um, when you're setting your, up your files, you should design your building and build your building in one file. We will then bring that building into the site We'll create a master site file. You'll bring the building as a block reference into that site file. So there's going to be a nested series of blocks as we start to, to establish it. Your final renderings will be in the site file, not in the building file. So you'll, you'll still assign your materials inside the building file, but it won't be for the final rendering. You won't put your lights in there and whatever just yet. OK? So I'll let you guys start working. If you have any questions, let me know. But today is about getting that first round of, of design accomplished.